Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Silent Hill Origins. I hope y'all are excited for today's episode because we're finally going to get to learn a little bit about why Origins turned out the way it did. So I think once upon a time I said that Climax LA were the original developers of Original Sin. Uh, which was the title for Origins before everything changed. And there's footage of what the game was, which was an over-the-shoulder Resident Evil 4-style game set in Silent Hill. The Climax team in LA cited... Oh shit, he jumped on me twice before I could get this thing in the door. We are going to penetrate this door with our ritual dagger. Um... Guys, isn't getting a third one off? They cited that they were having issues with the engine. Which they had to build from scratch because this was not something the original Silent Hill 2, 3, and 4 engine was designed for. Um, that and the higher-ups, I guess that the publisher had absolutely no solid idea what they wanted out of this game. At the time, they were chasing RE4, and they wanted Silent Hill to reinvent itself just like Resident Evil did. And there was a lot of internal conflict on that specific set of ideas. What should this be? So it was a big old clusterfuck. Nobody had a big picture idea for how this was supposed to turn out. Oh, and here's the best part. The biggest change was not to how Silent Hill played. It was the tone in the writing. Because you see, Silent Hill Original Sin was a dark comedy. And I shit you not, the inspiration for said comedy was Scrubs. Like the sitcom with Zach Braff scrubs. That was the inspiration for a dark comedy, Silent Hill. Cause of death, a broken heart. That is... Actually meant to serve as a hint. Uh, because if we examine the jeweled heart that we picked up from the pool, when I shake it, I can hear something rattling around inside. So that's our vague indicator that we need to go do something to break the heart open. Uh, we're actually going to go back, switch to the normal world, and go into the maintenance room to use that vice that I pointed out. But as I was saying, nobody had a goddamn clue what to do with this game to a ghost. There's no pretending now, is there? We both know that thing in the, uh, at Cedar Grove isn't you. You died that day. You try to kill our son. When I brought your gift today, when you smashed it, I finally woke up. I've been dreaming all these years, kidding myself that you'll be alright one day. The Helen I loved is dead. I try to remember how it was all those years ago. Today, when we got married, I can't remember anymore. I'm tired. I know Travis will be fine on his own. I'm gonna see you again, Helen. Yours and forever, Richard. So I think you know what this is implying about. Travis's dad, especially with the photo that we just saw in the cause of death, broken heart. That's uh, laying it on a little bit thick. Oh, and we're back to 503 so we can switch. Uh, so development ha uh, halted. Konami threw their arms up and said, fine, if... Uh, Climax LA can't get it done, we'll give it to someone who can fulfill our non-vision. And over it went to Climax UK with uh, Sam Barlow at the head of the project. And I love how similar this room in particular looks to the Otherworld version of itself. How dingy it is. Uh, Sam Barlow told them that their ideas were bad, and they should feel bad. Not in those words, but yeah, pretty much it was a dumbass idea. People will hate it if you do this. Oh, boy. 
that foresight. So Konami went, okay, remake it entirely, do whatever you want. Oh, but you have the exact same time frame to get it done, and you have the same budget as before, even though you now have to start from the ground up. They started over entirely. Sam Barlow rewrote the entire script, also the wedding ring, and it has something engraved on the inside. Since that's being pointed out to us, it's worth examining this. Uh, wedding ring has a message engraved on its band. It reads, to my June bride, love forever, Richard. So remember, we also had the calendar that we saw through the people with 12 circled on it. So we now have June 12. Uh, so we can go back to that rotary calendar and start to work on that. We're still missing a year, but mm, I, I get the feeling that the year has been with us oh, all along. So they, like I was saying, they remake it. They remake Original Sin into what you're seeing now, more or less. And they're, again, doing this with the same time frame and the same budget. Uh, remember when I said the Butcher was the only monster to make the jump from the first version of the game, Original Sin, to Origins? Yep, they redid everything. And they did it still having to hit the same release window with the same budget. The same budget as when it was a half-finished, flaming disaster, third-person, uh, over-the-shoulder, over the dark comedy shooter with a barely functional engine. Do you get why I'm a little more inclined to be less harsh to Origins? Do you understand now why this is a relatively remarkable game? I mean, even in a vacuum, I still think Origins is quite decent. But given the circumstances, this is outstanding that this game is as good as it is. It should be a sewer fire for all the development problems it had. It should not be this good. It does not deserve to be this good. Okay, so we're going to examine this lucky quarter that we've had with us all along, that we started the game with. I think we even examined this before, but you may have not have taken note of the contents. Uh, there is a year etched into it, and it's 1961. So let's just try June 12th, 1961. At six. Oh, this doesn't go through every number. That's actually kind of nice, since I can't go backwards. And this is month day year style, so 1961. And it opens up. And this is the reason why, even if we knew the solution at the beginning, which I did, we couldn't do anything of value with this puzzle anyway, because there's a circular depression, and it fits the wedding ring. Something dropped down on the keyboard behind me, where we got the initial key to room, what was that, 503 or something? Either way, whatever key that we got in the beginning. We now have the room 500 key. It's stained in blood. And we remember that in the other world, room 500 was locked. But in the in the normal world or the fog world, it's the one that is covered by police tape. So we're finally going to go and see what's up with that. While enjoying this somber piano tune. And this is kind of amazing. I managed to navigate all the shortcuts fine while I was going on on a big spiel. The moment I shut up, I lost my <laughs> intuition for navigating. Fuck me. Let's make doubly sure that I'm going the right way this time. Which I almost wasn't. Oh, I would 
rather not get charged by all that. Yeah, we passed through this, what, three times now? It was worth clearing all those two backs out. Holy shit! Holy shit! You're 503, right? I think this is a different camera angle, which is making the room look slightly different. Now we get to see what's behind door number 500. I say the noise they use for that for um, the effect where young Travis is warping around and flickering it's really effective that kind of shrill distorted sound because it's so jarring especially at the start of a cutscene when you're least expecting it it's actually pretty startling Still got a quarter left. You want the quarter? Daddy, wake up. Please, Daddy. I'm not sleeping, son. Daddy. You knew I wasn't sleeping. Why did you stand there for so long? It wasn't right. Please, Daddy. It wasn't healthy, son. Daddy, this is insane. Time you faced up to what happened. Your mother and I will see you in heaven, son. This is the first boss I ever saw in a screenshot for Origins, and it got me pretty into the idea of Origins. I mean, symbolically, this one's pretty straightforward in context, because you know exactly what's up, but still. It's kind of annoying to fight, but I just, I really love the visuals of this one. I guess there is a noteworthy element to it. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but... Uh, the tentacle choke. It's reflecting Richard's death by hanging. Uh, so Travis's life is just a ball of sunshine. Mother abused him, thinking he was a demon because voices in, a, in the mirror told her so. He was committed to a uh, sanitarium. And the father being so heartbroken over that. Uh, hung himself. Hanged himself. And yet we still don't exactly know what Travis's deal is. This is not good. We didn't have a lot of redeemer ammo coming into this. Uh, so we have the biting attack, we have the blood spit, and then we have the choking. That's pretty much all there is to this fight. It's just shuffling back and forth. Still, the damage is largely unavoidable. 
You can do it, but it's incredibly hard. The design of this enemy actually reminds me a lot of, like, a Silent Hill 3 boss. Rather, none specifically, but one that just belongs in Silent Hill 3. Probably why I like it so much. This is even possible. Dad. How could he do that to himself? Why won't you let me forget? Why are you doing this to me? Come out! Come out! I've got your... your thing for you. Happy? You've dug up my parents. What now? When do we get to look inside your sick little mind? This isn't right. Even though I think my all-time favorite Silent Hill uh, musical piece is a piano theme, uh, the reprise version of uh, Promise from Silent Hill 2, I still wouldn't normally say that Pianos are heavily associated with Silent Hill, and yet there are lots of really, really strong piano tracks in Origins. This is the last one. Hooray, I got it, finally. That took me way too much time. Our goal was to line the approximate symbols up. Or the types of symbols.
broke the spell. Now, she is free. I just want to end this. I thought that's what she wanted, too. I want out. Can you help me? You want out? Ha <laughs> ha! Far too late for that. Even with your misguided help, she can't stop us now. The ceremony begins soon. Finally, she will birth God! Here she comes. Look upon what you have wrought! So all of a sudden, we got a money cutscene. And we're dumped onto the other world streets of Silent Hill. This is our final other world, and our only map is Aless's drawing of the town. Thematically, I like this part a lot. In play, it's a child's map. Actually, this is that mirrors uh, Silent Hill 3's ending a lot, too. Except not out on the streets. Uh, navigating this is a headache. It's dark. Uh, visually, it's really hard to discern things. And the map is not a, an accurate representation of where you are. But thematically, it's still real fucking cool. Also, lots of narrow walkways. Lots of two backs and uh, Calibans. So, who boy, it's time to fucking truck it. Holy shit, this whole area is bad times for all. Also, I sort of love how the final other world of the game has nothing to do with the mirrors. It does have something to do with Alessa, who kind of acts as a, a foil or a mirror for Travis. You know, they, they're still doing the whole duality angle with this. But it's just, it, it's purely out of your control this time. You've reassembled the Flowers, and the final other world is something that you have no control o over transitioning in and out of. Man, oh Jesus Christ. I didn't even know they could do this. Is this a one hit kill? If I mess this QTE up? Fucking Jesus. Actually, this is, now that I think about it a little bit more, this is more of a running theme with Endgame Silent Hill of doing something to to mess with your map. You know, you had nowhere in Silent Hill 1 where you were creating the map as you went, but you had no, like, there was not a completed map anywhere. You didn't just pick one up, you filled it in as you went along. You had the drawing of the map in 3 and then here again in, in uh, Origins. I think I'm on the right path now. Oh, it's so very difficult to tell. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Although I can't just go straight here. Like the map would have you believe. So we're gonna have to... Do this. Yeah, not quite. Oh, 
shit. No. This is like the most threatening part of the whole game. Fuck off. Not happy about that. Still have the amp pool. I picked up a second one. This is the only time in the whole game I think I've used the energy drink. Holy shit, what do you mean I can't get past there? Ooh, okay. This is not... okay? Oh, this is... It looks so straightforward on that map. I'm getting teamed up on. On the bright side, we're getting to see a lot of how grotesque two backs are. Like that sound. Fuck. Oh, please move. Please move. Please, please, please move, please. Get the fuck out of the way. What a goddamn bastard. Mmm. Please, please no. I know the Caliban must be catching up too. I think we're finally here. Well, that's awfully nice. No, 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 I want a health drink. There we are. That's something. Yeah, okay. There it is. That's the antique shop. Remember, in Silent Hill 1, this is where Alessa brings Harry. Right back to the antique shop. Damn, we took some fucking damage. And we're gonna take some damage in this upcoming fight, too. Flaro's device, origin unknown. The device is first mentioned in the poetry of Chang Shen, an advisor to members of the early Han dynasty. In one of the tracts, Chang Shen jokes he's trapped a demon inside his three-sided box. When Chang Shen died in a terrible fire at the Imperial Palace in 115 BC, the device appeared lost. It was later rumored to be in the possession of a Lutheran monk, M.G. Lewis, who in 1796 spoke of its ability to control and amplify thought. It was Lewis who linked it not to a demon, but to God himself, claiming it was a weapon left by angels as a force for good. The Flowers was the device we unwittingly stunned Alessa with in Silent Hill 1, given to us by Dahlia in the church during her fucking zany gyromancy speech.
Ooh, it has been a while, hasn't it? This is a necessary save, I do believe. assumed you'd just leave. Well, time to put her pawn to sleep. Good night. <coughs> She's here! We need to begin this now! Don't worry, Dahlia. With him out of the way, she has no conduit for her power. Mama? Mama? What is it? Don't touch. Oh, it's hot! Leave it be. It is a cage for a demon. Contained? His power will focus yours. Release him, and we will all burn in the fires of hell! We have to defeat Satan. You know, the true funnel boss of Silent Hill 1 is just Baphomet. This one is just a really generic Gabaru man. Although I do like the way his, I guess the appendages on his back kind of twitch around. It's the only real design thing about him that I like. Fuck this meteor attack though. Uh, he's got real stupid Fulgord style chest laser. Uh, if you get real close, he'll swipe at you. Uh, and this is the attack he does most often. And meteors suck. Uh, so, the deal is Dahlia told Alessa that the Flaros caged a demon, and this is Alessa's dream of what the devil looks like. Which, okay, she's a young child. Fair enough. Uh, by the way, this is literally called Alessa's Dream, this monster. And we are going to dump all of our remaining ammo into it. Of which we don't have tons and tons. Luckily, if things get really bad, we have like 45 portable television sets we can throw at Satan. So that's cool. That's pretty cool, Silent Hill Origins. <laughs> I appreciate beating Satan with the power of like IV stands and toasters. Toasters that have been anointed by Jesus. Portable televisions containing the holy water of Christ. We are getting a little bit low, and we will take more damage. Uh, let's just dump more ammo in. It's really hard to avoid any kind of damage from the meteors. You don't get... It's not telegraphed enough where the meteors are going to land that you can actually react in time to dodge.
see. It's a girl. Go on. Hold her. Cheryl. We'll call her Cheryl. Half the soul is lost. The seed lies dormant. The other half is not lost. We'll use a summoning spell. Hearing her pain, it is sure to come. It will take time. We can wait. Okay, so first, let me say I appreciate the significance of him resetting the odometer and, you know, that's symbolic of him wiping the slate clean after his ordeal. But holy shit! The good ending to this game is Travis leaving a child holding a baby on the side of the road and driving off. That's so good! <laughs> that's so, so fucking good! <laughs> Why is it like this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and he acknowledges her. Oh my god. Oh god damn it. Alright. Let's let's compose. Uh that was a good ending. There is also a bad ending, but it requires you to kill more monsters than you can possibly kill in a single playthrough, so it's a new game plus thing. There's also the UFO ending, but uh, the bad ending is the basis for one of the most popular theories about our boy Travis here, who is cold blooded. Uh maybe more cold blooded than I think. Uh that theory being that he is the butcher, and also a serial killer who preys on women. Uh, so that ending, in that bad ending, I should say, he is strapped to a table, he's being injected with some kind of unknown liquid. Um, it may be the cult of the town strapping him down and injecting him with white Claudia or something to that end. Uh, or something to induce a dissociative fugue. Either way, uh, this is followed up by images of the butcher flickering over him and being superimposed over Travis. Uh, he was either showing signs of psychopathy as a child, which led to his mom thinking he was a demon or would grow up to be horrible, or that whole thing with his mom was a self-fulfilling prophecy where she abused him because of the voices in the mirror, and that led to him growing up to be a murderer who targeted women like his mother, his abusive mother. Uh, the beauty of Origins is that through all of this, they actually leave that really ambiguous. That's just a theory. Uh, it's possible none of that's true at all, but there's just enough in the game to form some line of conjecture. Uh, there's also the entire nature of the game and the central theme being duality. Many of the monsters, as we've been saying, and their attributes and their design elements can be derived from either Alessa's experiences or Travis's. This isn't a case where, like in Silent Hill 1, where all the monsters were just related to Alessa. Harry was just some vanilla everyman. Uh, it's Alessa's and Travis's Silent Hill in this one, and they have some parallels of their own, like they both had abusive mothers. I don't know, I think this was a, a pretty decent game. Like, I don't think it's amazing it's not in the upper echelons of Silent Hill but it is pretty good and probably the most underrated game in the series and while it's not my favorite I do understand why it turned out the way it did as we started the episode off when you consider that it's kind of a miracle that or Origins is so rock solid actually uh, I don't know if this is going to be the last Silent Hill LP I thought I was going to be done after the first three but here I am, so maybe there's more in store in the future. For now, I want to remind everyone to like, comment, uh, and subscribe. Uh, that's always helpful to me. Uh, and also check me out on Patreon, on Twitter, uh, on Twitch. All those links are in the description. Thank you all for watching. Uh, a certain father and son game is going to be up next. Take it easy. Have a good one, everyone.